Good morning. Yes, still morning. Okay, just wanted to check. All right, I'm Gus Hahn. I'm the CTO at CAA, and I'm going to talk to you very quickly about um, the issues we face that are driving us into this cloud-based world and why it matters to us to be able to move in this direction and be able to move there quickly and with uh, with uh, speed. Uh, fundamentally, for those of you who don't know what we do for a living, the CIA has three lines of business, okay? And our IT solutions have to support those three lines of business. The first thing we do is we collect information about the plans and intentions of our adversaries. The second thing that we do is we analyze that information and all the other information that we can collect to put together so that we can tell our policymakers and our warfighters uh, what this all means and what's happening in the world and why that should matter and why they should care. And the third thing we do is a very special set of things that we do at the direction of the president, and that is known as covert action. All right, that's the business of CIA. All right. In support of that business, IT got together and we said, what is it we need to do in the future to enable the business to be as effective tomorrow as it is today? And in fact, we want to be more effective tomorrow than we are today in everything that we do across the board. And we laid down what we call our four big bets. And the four big bets work in this way. The first and foremost thing is about big data, right? Don't kid yourself. It's a big data world. I'm going to talk a lot about that in a second. But it's about being able to collect all the information that we need to have together, essentially grow the haystack, magnify the needle so we can figure out what's going on and the world's information flows. The second thing that we do and our second big bet is about operational excellence. We are under extraordinary pressure economically, as you can read anything in the paper, in order to maximize the value of every dollar we spend in IT. And that pressure is only going to grow. And for us, operational excellence is not about lowest cost. Our uh, view of operational excellence is about best value. All right? It's about delivering the best value spend for every dollar in IT that we do. The third thing that we do, and I know some of you may not believe this very much, particularly if you read what gets printed and things like that, is we actually believe very strongly that we serve the CIA best when we support what goes on in the IC. And now that is not a self-serving play. What that really means, to be clear, is that there are many areas into which we as an organization have enormously strongly vested interests, and it matters, it matters extremely to us that it gets done really, really well, and it matters to the IC that we do it really well, and those are the areas in which we should stand up and say we should lead in that space. And there are other areas into which our partners in the IC do their jobs extremely well. We depend on them to do them, and we expect them likewise to stand up and lead as well. And if we do this together, we actually create a much more effective, safe, secure, and um, uh, uh, community to enable the national security of the United States. And then finally, believe it or not, it's all about our people. I often argue that number four should be number one, but it really is about having the best talent we can possibly have to the job that faces us. Okay. So in order to deliver on the four big bets as CTO, we came up with what we call our five major areas that we're going to drive investment for the future. And this is all about the cloud, except for you will note that cloud is only one of the things. It's really an ecosystem about which cloud exists, right? Cloud is a wonderful tool, but it's what do you want to do with the cloud that matters, and you have to really think that through. So the five places are really simple, right? It's what we call mass analytics. These are the things that our mission needs to be able to do with big data in order to figure out what's going on in the world. It's moving away from search as a paradigm to pre-correlating data in advance to tell them what's going on. It's about being able to have things like visualization capabilities so that in a sea of information, I can more easily visualize and understand what's happening without having to go through long lists of information to try and figure out what it all means and have it put together for me. It's about doing relationship analysis and network analysis so that I can understand what's going on in various pieces as they move. It's time and sequencing and geospatial placement and all those things like that. Big analytics on top of big data. The second area that we have is what we call widgets and services. This is a really simple concept. We are out of the business of building vertical applications. We want to build small units of functionality known as widgets, and we want those widgets to be able to interact with each other too so that the users themselves can generate and build the capabilities they want on their web top. How many of you guys have iPhones or Androids? Right? How many of you guys download your own apps? Right? A lot of you do, right? You like that, yeah? Okay. All right, that's the business we want to be in. We want to become Burger King, have it your way, not McDonald's, have it our way, if you understand what I'm saying, right? You like that ability to put your own stuff on there and play with it, right? That's got to be where we go, okay? It's about context for the business and the context in which they need it. 
The third is really important to us. This is a thing called security, but we call it security as a service. Security as a service is all about building security once and reusing it on everywhere, as opposed to what we've done in the past, which is every application we ever built built its own security into it. It's about making sure that we are secure in the end. It's about bringing things to bear like encryption. You know, I love the S3 encryption thing. That's actually a wonderful outcome. All right, so that we can protect our data and our information and our systems across the board. All right. The fourth thing we call the data harbor. The data harbor is not a place. It really is a capability into which we position all the data. And this is the place where all the big compute engines actually run in order to support mass analytics and widgets. So this is the place where we run things like all the Hadoop and uh, MapReduce services and Pig High Flume and pick your favorite flavor and new name of an open source product. All right. It's where we'll run things like Oracle and MySQL and uh, Astro Data and Greenplum and any of the other things that have to be in there in order to us to crunch the huge volumes of data that we have to deliver what the uh, what the analytics need to be able to do and display them on the desktop using the widgets so that we can get our job done. All this is dependent upon what is this cloud infrastructure that has to be there to give us the necessary capacity and performance at an operational excellence value proposition that makes it effective for us to bring this about and make it happen. All right. Okay, so what's our world today like? All right, our world today is really complex. Right, All right. we have got uh, an economic climate, as I mentioned before, that is uh, growing ever more dismal. It seems by the moment. All right, just read today's paper. I have my my uh, retirement fund just took another hit yesterday in the market. I don't know about you guys. At the same time. All right, we have these astounding commercial capabilities that have emerged in the market space. Right, It's not just about Amazon, but it's about all the tools and technologies that have come about in order for us to do things with information that we've never been able to do before or can only have dreamed about being able to do to figure out what's happening in the world's information flows. Right? It's about the fact that we have enemies that are very, very intelligent and very, very sophisticated. Okay? We never know what they plan to do next. Hence a need to do things like pattern analysis and pattern detection ahead of time. Anybody read Sergey Brin's article in Wired many months ago about finding a cure for Parkinson's? Right? You know what I'm talking about? What did he say? I'm looking for patterns that I don't know what the pattern is. How do I find those? That's our problem with our enemies today. They never act the same way twice. Right? And as a result, we have to look for other indicators of potential behavior or potential outcome in order to prevent them from doing bad things. Okay? And then we live in this world where the information flows have completely changed. Right? It used to be back in the good old days when I first started work in the agency in 1985, there would be this wonderful thing of directed media. Right, The New York Times would write an article, or we'd collect a piece of information, write a piece of cable traffic about it, and it would be what you would use to understand what's going on in the world. Today, it's moved into the communications of the masses. The social media thing has just exploded. It's both an opportunity and an enormous challenge because language has changed and the opportunity space has changed, and it's a very diffuse world into which how do you figure out what's happening when it's spread everywhere at once. Okay. All right, so in case you don't believe me, it's a big data world, let's take a look at some things, right? Did you know that Google now has more than one trillion indexed URLs? Google's index is more than 100 petabytes in size. These are pretty big numbers, all right? YouTube is almost an exabyte. In fact, YouTube may have passed an exabyte. When I first put this chart together back in March of this year, they're approaching 800 petabytes in size. That's there. Uh, Twitter, 144 million tweets a day and growing. Actually, during the Osama bin Laden takedown, they exceeded 300, the equivalent rate of 350 million tweets right, a day if that were to happen the entire day through that was there. Facebook is more than 90 petabytes in size, and yet that's just the human-generated stuff. Right? The one that really worries me a lot, and in this big data world is the one that's going to become hugely important, is this issue of censors because sensors have the potential to overwhelm everything you have. And oh, by the way, those of you who held up your hand with an Android or an iPhone, right? You know you're a walking sensor, right? Okay, all right. Somebody knows where you are all the time, and it may not be who you want to know. And by the way, that's not us. We don't do that. <laughs> okay. So what's our job? Our job is to leverage this world of big data, right? We've got to find out what is the information that actually matters in this space, okay? We have to connect the dots, put it together, understand what it means, so that we can figure out what our adversaries are actually intending and planning to do. And by the way, I want to know before they do it, not after they do it, okay? I want to stop the next underwear bomber before he gets on the airplane and lights his underwear on fire, not after he's on the plane and already headed in our direction, okay? 
So why do we care about this? This really matters, right? Arab Spring, you guys know Arab Spring, right? The communications of Arab Spring did not happen in official media. It all happened through SMS and tweets, and it happened on Facebook, and it happened by cellular phone calls amongst the individuals that were there, right? It was a diffuse set of information that we have to be able to figure out where it happened and, and what's going on in order to figure out where they're heading and what's going on in the world, right? I want to stop the guy that said before he flies the plane into the building, all right? What's our problem? Our problem is the fact that, I'll let you give you a second to read that. All right. Can I see that all the way in the back? All right. The database of useful information is 5K. The database of useless information is 500, 000, 500 million gigabytes. That's about right. Our problem is that we never know which 5K. All right. Which 5K matter? All right. The reason this is, is I don't know the value of a dot today because its future value is only known when it's connected with other information that may not arrive until tomorrow, okay? And I have to figure all of that information out, and I have to put it together in a way so that I can collect it, store it, process it, continuously look at it, and see what changed in my world. If I don't have a dot because I threw it on the floor based on information I think I know, if I use the what I know today that I want to know about, I will throw away information that critically matters tomorrow. You know what I'm saying in that? And so since I don't know that, it's very hard to make a judgment call to what any given piece of information is not useful in the world that we're going to have. And so the model that we used to use, which is somebody collects it, somebody decides what's important to you, and then they throw everything else away and they only hand you what they believe you want to know about, is a failed model. And believe me, it fails spectacularly in this big data world. Okay? So our reality, significant budget cuts are coming. All right? We are in enormous pressure to do IT spending. Just simply read the article, Clapper's comments from yesterday. I mean, how many of you guys read that? Yes, yeah, all in the news. Okay, that's there. Believe me, that's a true statement. All right. However, at the same time, we are expected to deliver new capabilities ever faster. All right. And at the same time, instability around the globe is rising. I think you can see this every time you read anything or watch the news, what's going on, all right? And therefore, speed and agility are paramount. It's what Werner talked about, right? We have to be able to move as fast as the problem space as it exists, all right? Okay. So let's talk cloud for a second. Where does all this fit together? All right. Well, cloud in our world is the solution to both ends of our problem spectrum simultaneously. Cloud is about the big data problem. It's about having massive compute and massive storage so I can bring information together, understand what's in it, ensure I can deliver my services continuously any place on the globe, anytime, anywhere, do it securely. We'll talk, I'm not going to talk security uh, today. I probably should have, all right? And at the same time, deliver what is the, what we view as the operational effectiveness, uh, operational efficiencies that we are going to be under the gun to do, right? It's about because of the cloud driving this rigorous standardization, because the cloud delivers all these capabilities through automation and failure tolerance, and that because the cloud allows us to drive the cost of people out of the equation from running infrastructure and capacity, it enables us to do exactly that. Okay, The cloud does things for us in our mission space that we could never have achieved otherwise. It allows us to basically turn IT into a frictionless commodity for mission. All right? And when IT is frictionless, it allows us to do things that we could never have dreamed of before. It allows us to take on a problem, start fast, scale fast, succeed fast, or fail really cheap and go at it again a second time in another way. Right? Cloud allows us to turn, I love Werner's picture at the end, right, of the electronic thing. It allows us to turn IT and computation like 110 out of the wall. Right? It allows us to do these things at a scale to which heretofore we could never, ever imagine being able to do. Right? So cloud solves the yin and the yang of what has been the problem space that I think has affected us and I think any other enterprise that has uh, come before us or works in the same space or any other spaces there, which is that the constant pressure to find efficiencies has always been dichotomously opposed with the constant pressure to deliver new capabilities and solve the problems of your business, right? And that in the past, when you were asked to find efficiencies, it meant reduce costs, which meant what are you going to cut, right? Tomorrow, what we want to be able to do, and today in our cloud, and tomorrow as we go forward, what we want to be able to do is say, I'm going to continuously drive down the cost of running my IT and my infrastructure so I can recapture those dollars, move them back up the stack so I can deliver bigger and better outcomes for my mission as we go forward. And that's where we're heading in our cloud world. I'll leave you with a final thought. It's not about the cloud. I'm sorry. 
Amazon, say this to you, but okay, or anybody else in the cloud business. It's really about delivering your outcome for your business, okay? And the cloud is simply a mechanism that we see for us to be able to deliver our outcome in our business. All right, thanks.